be honest, I made this video for selfish reasons. I've been fascinated by Native American culture and history for as long as I can remember. When I knew I was heading to Southern Utah for that Hidden Gems video, I made a special request for a Native connection. You see, down by the Four Corners, where Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado come together, there's a history of this country that's rarely shown. Off the vast, picturesque highways, often reserved for long-haul truckers and retired RVers, sits a forgotten land that once told many stories. And I connect with Lewis, a native Navajo, to try and understand just a few of them. So with the, uh, originally, what I'm, I'm not sure I want to ask the right way, is it what tribe you're from? Is that the best way to yeah, ask? Yeah, exactly, because there's so many tribes out here. I would say I'm Navajo, okay. and the Navajo tribe is located right next to the Ute tribe, Okay. the Hopi tribe, the Zuni tribe, so you would definitely have to be specific. You and know, you were raised in this area, or? I was raised in Monument Valley. Okay. So that's not far from here. You know, we drive south, 20 some miles, we're in Monument Valley. And on, uh, was it on a reservation, right? Yep. Okay. Grew up on the Navajo reservation, grew up with uh, no electricity, no water. It wasn't rough, it was, that's taught me to be active. Yeah. You know, it taught me to appreciate water and, you know, um, grandma and grandpa always told us to wake up with the sun. Navajo culture, pretty awesome, pretty unique. We live by it daily. So as soon as the come, sun comes up, we're supposed to run to the east. The sun comes up over the horizon and we, we give thanks, we pray, then we run back home. So in the Navajo culture, our Navajo Hogans, our doorways, every doorway uh -huh. faces to the east. Okay. So, so you can get out in the morning. Exactly. So in the mornings, all we do is open our Hogan doors. Yeah. We run towards the east until the sun comes up every day. Then we give our thanks. Then we, we run home. Yeah. And it was running. You had to run. And my grandma did that daily. So uh -huh. my grandparents lived fairly old age. <laughs> they were like, were they fast? They were healthy, healthy, 105, <laughs> my grandma. No way. To, yeah, it was pretty awesome because to this day, I ask grandma, I say, grandma, why don't you have electricity and running water at home? She says, why? I don't need it. Yeah. You know, that, that means they're going to build roads out here to my home. Yeah, There's yeah. going to be power lines running out here. Because out there, the nearest home you see is way in the distance, about five miles away. Yeah. You know, so the Navajos live pretty sparse you know, out in the country. So that's what she wants to, to be serene, like right. we're at now. Yeah. It's kind of like that at back home. Like how it used to be, right? Yeah, like exactly. How? This is sagebrush, and Show this uh, this has a really strong aroma. So what we do is when, when I pass by sagebrush, I always tend to do like I did, and then I, we what we do is we bless ourselves. Put it all over and bless our limbs, and always our heart and our legs. And this is what we do. We bless ourselves and we give thanks to the plant and which trickles down to the earth and then up, upstairs and you know, the sky. We call it hajon. Okay. Hajon. 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 Hajon is the term in the Navajo culture, which means the interconnectedness between nature, the sky, spirituality, physicalness, and animals, wildlife, the birds. Yeah, yeah. Which all interconnectedness means like that equilibrium. Yeah. So it's, uh, that's what we try to achieve is hajon. Hajon. Out here, y'all, out here, remember we're going to see an archaeological site, right? right? Man, out here, the archaeology is all over, guys. So out here, I've seen, so we just walked through right here. Not, not too many people notice. They just walked, looks like a trail, right? Yeah. But here, if you notice, you come down a little bit, there's a lot of, this is an old fire pit right here we're walking through. So we're talking maybe like 500 AD. Uh -huh. There was a pro there's a home underneath all the sediment. So right here, this is the outer perimeter. You know, they're living Creekside right here, you know, yeah. the best spot around. So this is their outer perimeter of a home, oh which God. we can't even see that, y'all. Oh you God. know, so, but I see that. You yeah. know, walking, I'm like, hey man, it's an old fire pit right here. And I look around, I can easily tell, you know, this is fresh sediment, y'all. So. Geog geologists come out here and they say this is a from a probably like a thousand years ago flood uh -huh. came in deposited this sediment and just covered everything 
and you know these these trees are fresh you know they're not even a thousand years old yeah so these grown you know now it's all totally co covered it's like yeah yeah people walk by but we're going to uh 1300 a.d site these are 500 bc and a.d so there's a lot of history just hidden underneath the, the ground no way yeah so out here you gotta you know you gotta be careful you know yeah. well out here we're, we're digging and all of a sudden we're, oh wow there's something right here yeah and next you know we got to call the archaeologist you know and they're <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. wow you guys found a nice site and like yeah. they're all over you know so sometimes just, you want to keep do you want to call the archaeologist or do you want to just uh, remain them or is it is it positive to tell the story or would you rather keep it to yourselves does that make sense yeah like, as a as an as an Navajo, yeah you know i i'm out here i gotta be careful you know navajos we got a lot of taboos man big yeah. time so you know i'm i just got to be careful which means i'm not about to go hey y'all hey y'all you know because yeah. that's these are ceremonial sites spiritual right. so you know if anything i see stuff like that i'm like okay i gotta back up yeah, you know yeah. and because it's protected that's the protection because you know? one cool discovery could lead it to arches or zion or something that's so you know this place right here could turn into you know a national parking park area. disney world yeah, yeah it's turned into a parking area yeah, exactly. so i could see that it would be a difficult thing where you have this incredible history do you share it and do you because you, you can tell the story yeah. of the history or do you keep it quiet to remain sacred true so it yeah. doesn't all turn into a parking lot right yeah i, I can see so, how that's difficult yeah so that's that's part of preservation uh -huh. is to just leave it as leave it as it is you yeah know? there's plenty of other sites you know to see a lot of these tribes come out here they just they want to leave it there you yeah because that's where their their grandpa and grandma lived and possibly are buried you yeah know? so they, definitely when they left they just said let's leave it and Man. but they pray for it so we're doing our part as part of that prayer you know we're yeah. just we're leaving it man we're leaving it as is so that's all we cool. can do so cryptobiotic soil yep is that we call it mm -hmm. cryptobiotic soil it's yeah. hundreds of years to grow so that's the reason another reason they're studying it yeah because it's beneficial they know because if it gets busted it just gets um, loosened up and it's unable to be stable uh -huh. it's unable to it this is extracting nitrogen uh, oxygen um, carbon you know yeah. all these um, nutrients and feeding it it, it really soaks up water too because it's so arid out here any sprinkle man it soaks it up and it just takes it in and it's nourishing the soil and it's uh mother mother nature taking care of herself that's all it is man wow. so we got to be careful that's why we tell people stay on the trail yeah you know, because so people veer it off and once you bust the crust man it's gonna take hundreds of more years you know to grow to get stable again unbelievable yep <clears throat> we've made it to house on fire house on fire is a great home oh my gosh. um setting they literally weren't living in these dwellings that we're seeing a lot of stuff going on here you know as i look down this is actually an old wall so it's not just a dwelling you know you gotta look around and say oh my goodness there's something here this is the old wall here if i wanted to further investigate you know i just gotta look around and i say okay definitely there's no doorway there's a window uh -huh. but that's an access to where to the granary okay so what we're looking at is storage rooms oh really yeah so <clears throat> back they put in, all this work in for storage huh yeah definitely very important place that's true. they stored food mainly food probably weapons okay tools you know they were making pottery so um many of these could be possibly kilns okay you know where they made um pottery they finished their pottery here so this is a big uh um factory that we see here and the reason why it's blackened is before they stored their food they want to cleanse the walls they want to purify it make it clean sanitize everything sanitize with fire build a fire kill off any organisms that's growing no way and then once they have their food prepped and sealed up in some pottery yeah um they would put it inside the granary the last final process would be to seal it in the light another fire light a fire close it up that seals it right yeah the fire is gonna consume all that oxygen and just like a seal type Unbelievable. so there's no oxygen in these um granaries 
And if you ask many of archaeologists that have found granaries, uh -huh. they find them still. And when they do, they find them still with food. And many of the food that we purchase at the store, the anisuzza beans, a lot of the squash that we have at the store, yeah. came from granaries. And the tribe, is, it, is this Navajo? These are, these are related to the, the Pueblo group. And the Pueblo, there's many Pueblos. Okay. So it's hard to really pinpoint which tribe because there's Pueblo Jimez, there's a Zuni, okay. there's Hopi, okay. and they all come here. And to really pinpoint that, you gotta look at the petroglyphs and the pictographs, and that tells you the clan symbols who See live the language, there. okay. Yep. And this architecture has evolved over time. You know, this architecture we're looking at, it's influenced by other, other cities. You know, Chaco Canyon is located in New Mexico. Uh -huh. And that's a huge city with, I mean, it's like a, it occupied well over 500 people. Yeah. And from that, scientists study that area. From Chaco, there's roads that run geometric from Chaco in all directions. Yeah. And they lead to other cities. And one, one road leads to here. Yeah. We get influence from the Mesa Verde. Uh -huh. Because it's right here, see these tiny rocks that are embedded? This yeah. is a form of chinking. Uh -huh. Chinking is done at several cities, like over in um, Hovenweep is another city. Hovenweep, yeah, yeah, I heard of that, yeah, yeah. Hovenweep's not far. We, we see stuff like this. On a daily basis, they came from their granary, which is here. Oh, and they passed through this nice, I mean, tunnel area. Where and this is a, an area where it's little sun, so they could have had a... No way. They're probably building, I mean, their factory was probably back here. You know, if you want to do work during the day, yeah. you want to be working out of the sun. And so this I'm is a, an area where most people don't see. I mean, they come in here and you still got to look around and just notice... You know, sometimes you see Moki steps. So that's why we don't crawl on all these rocks. Yeah. Without a ladder, they needed to make steps so they would chip in a place where they would put a toe uh -huh. hole. So this is all natural. All steps and yeah. points of mm -hmm. to get up, huh? Yep. I mean, Take a look around, y'all, and see if you see anything. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, brother. No uh, way. What? Look, look above you. No, I missed that one. <laughs> awesome, brother. Those yeah. are big hands, too. Exactly, bro. Yep. I, I, you would think in here, you would think they're smaller, they're moving around, right? Yeah, you see their doorways are just tiny. You Especially, know. you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. This is paint here. Who knows what it was? And what, what year do you said again? That we, About we 1300. 1300. AD. Paint that Sherman Williams would be impressed by. <laughs> <laughs> From House on Fire, we moved to the cave towers of Mule Canyon and the hidden dwellings that still remain within the steep cliff walls. If you were just hiking through this area on your own, there's a good chance you would completely miss these historic structures. Take a look over and cross. See under the ledge? Uh-huh. You guys see anything over there? See under the overhang? There's a, in the shade. This is incredible. Houses built within the canyon walls steps carved into the rocks. Look at that. This is the entryway carved in to the rocks that allows them to get down to their homes. This is a huge spring right here. So we're talking the, the most prized real estate area in uh. this whole area. Why? Because we got this fresh water coming out of the rock here. And that's so hence why this was all set up like this. Yep. If we didn't have that breeze and blowing the leaves around, we could hear that trickle. Really? Yeah, so there's still water flowing. It's flowing pretty good, actually. Cold water. These were homes, right? This were these were store. homes. Okay. So we actually, a lot of these are circular structures, which are towers. Okay. Towers are located over in Hovenweet uh -huh. and all those major cities that we were talking about earlier. So Hovenweet, Mesa Verde are in that area. Okay. Chaco is literally in that area. So these vantage points are where there were lookouts. You know, these people are living in caves and up in these high protected yeah. areas. So these caves are for storage, gathering water. There's towers for lookout. Wood mm. that was actually carried up here by the people. And it's still intact. The roof, you can actually see the roof. So those yeah. are the roof beams. 
You can actually see the door, look at her. That's awesome to see the wood that was put there. So this is a different type of style that we saw from over there, which tells me different clan, yep. different different mentality, different techniques. Again, we're just missing that outer adobe layer. This would have looked like a solid rock. So that was that's what made it so camouflaged back in the day. People that aren't familiar with these areas, they they walk by these stuff yeah. like real quick. Yeah. As our day with Lewis comes to an end, I tell him that I hope this is only the beginning of my Native American education and experience. My first interaction is a simple one. The subject is about the land. I purposefully limit the questions about suffering, social issues, casinos, appropriation. I keep it simple. Hopefully these stories will unfold over time as I learn more about the original keepers of the country that I call home. I've only scratched the surface on the layered and complex history of these people, and I can't wait to learn more. In the meantime, after saying goodbye, it's an interesting feeling and juxtaposition checking into the beautiful, newly built Bluff Dwellings Resort nearby. Look at this place. Bluff Dwellings Resort. What? Take a look at this room. 124. Look at that. Cool. Kiva right there. Fire pits on. Beautiful is that. And then, based on Lewis's recommendation, we finished the day with some Navajo tacos. So we were with Lewis, and he told us if you want something traditional to eat, semi-traditional, you gotta go get a Navajo taco. So we're at Twin Rocks Cafe. This is traditional Navajo fry bread. Look at this. Oh, it's got a polto too. Danny got blue corn pancakes as well. All right, let's get this Navajo taco. I have no idea how to eat this. This one is with carnitas. You're doing good. Well, thank you. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> we'll take it one step at a time. You'll enjoy it. Oh, good. Have a good day. Too. Thank you. All right, and this. I want that cross section. <laughs> Look what I'm saying. I can't eat. Do I eat? I don't eat like that. Yeah, you, you know how to do it. <laughs> that's that's actually the perfect size for your bite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's another job. Whoa, we got carnitas, shredded lettuce, jalapenos, pickled onions, diced up tomatoes on this. It's like an unsweetened fried dough. And it even has a little bit more of a pull and chewy consistency. Mm. Wow, that is good. It's aggressive, but that is delicious and these carnitas. Oh, that's good. And more of a pizza for you. What do you think? It's a mix in between a pizza and a taco. That is beautiful. That bread is good, right? Mm. And I can see, I think that's a chili. Like a type of chili, it's sweet. Tastes like home, or does it taste like something foreign? Oh, good question, Gary. Foreign. <laughs> <laughs> Even my trust betrayed me. A little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. That does it for another episode. I am very full right now. That Navajo taco was delicious, but I am stuffed. We're going to head back to Bluff Dwellings Resort and relax for a little bit. Listen, the biggest takeaway I want for you to have from this video is respect. Uh, one of the most difficult things about showing off these lesser known places, these hidden gems and, and these ancient ruins is that inevitably people are going to want to go there. And I just hope that 
because you're watching this video and you're following this channel, that means that you have more of appreciation. You, you give a shit about the places that you're going to. And I just hope that you respect the places that you go and discover. And you don't make me regret showing off these places. Um, I would highly recommend if you do go to House on Fire, if you go to the Cave Towers or anything like that, you call Lewis, you set up a tour. He is the best. Obviously, he knows so much about the land. To the common eye, you walk through, you see that land, and it just seems honestly like a desolate place. Like there's nothing going on there. And as I said at the beginning of this video, there's so many stories to be told from this place. Every little nook and cranny has a purpose. I mean, from the the cryptobiotic soil that you would just walk over and not think twice about that takes hundreds of years to form to these rock formations to the ruins to everything in between again just please please i struggle with making these videos because i know inevitably it'll bring more people so please show respect to the places that you go please understand and be considerate don't leave anything behind. Take everything out with you if you go. I'm begging you. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notifications bell. I hope this is just the tip of the iceberg for my experience and interaction with Native Americans in my own country. That's it. I'll see you guys next week. Travel deeper. I believe it's chamomile. If this makes the video, that means it's chamomile. If it doesn't, you never saw this. <laughs> a lot of people said the same thing, Daniel. This is as far as I go. <laughs> <laughs> See you on the other side. Inside the rattlesnake farm. No, you first. <laughs> and begin. And the adventure begins right now. Let's go. And the adventure begin. Sorry. No, you're good. I fucked that up. Do I have my heat seated? Golly, is it, <laughs> am I heat seated? It feels like it. Yeah, mine too. What the hell?